Welcome to Travel Market Life, your companion for industry insights and professional business development. Travel Market Life. Join us by webcast, video or podcast. Hello and welcome back. Joining us today is Simone Puerto, friend of Travel Market Life, consultant, writer and startup founder. He's going to be talking about the top three technologies on the horizon for the hospitality sector, his frustrations with the technology market for hospitality, and where hotels need to double down their efforts. Travel Market Life Travel Market Life is backed by Haynes Marcoms, a B2B marketing communications PR consultancy specialising in the technologies, travel, hospitality and property sectors. Travel Market Life Joining me now is Simone Puerto, consultant, writer and startup founder. He actually joined us previously, so a friend of the show, on our Photographs and Memories series, where he talked fondly about Joy Division and Ian Curtis. Simone, thanks ever so much for coming and joining us today. Now, after that episode of Photographs and Memories, uh, you actually had a dream come true. I did. Uh, and it was all because of the podcast, actually, uh, because we talked about the, the, the Joy Division mural and the fact that it was repainted over. And it was like a, a, a quote unquote scandal inside the music uh, community. And, uh, and I talked about that because I visited that mural just a couple of weeks before of our podcast. And, uh, uh, and, I, and we, we published the podcast and uh, somehow uh, somebody got in touch with me and they wanted to do a charity show with Peter Hook, uh, historical Joy Division and New Order bass player. Um, and uh, it was all because they heard the, the podcast, listened to the podcast, and they told me, look, you want to do this? So basically, we're doing this event, and it will be uh, Peter Hook talking about uh, he and Curtis, and then concert where he will play uh, some Joy Division classics, and uh, everything will go to charity for uh, Shout uh, UK, that is an SMS-based uh, service for uh, mental health and suicide prevention support. And, um, and I said, yes, of course. So basically last, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was in, in Manchester and uh, uh, spent an evening with Peter Rook and it was great. Uh, and it was all because of the podcast. So thank you so much because it was like a, an amazing snowball effect. And it was all because of photographs and memories really. That's absolutely fantastic. It's just incredible who listens to a podcast on hospitality technology and then suddenly <laughs> you know, say you are traveling uh, to another country to follow up one of your, you know, as a fan of Joy Division um, and, and what happened there. And it's that's incredible. And you, I believe you also visited Macclesfield whilst you were there. Yeah, basically, whenever I, I go, look, first of all, I love Manchester. You know, if you're a music fan, uh, you have loved Manchester. Everybody has a story. It could be like the Smiths or the Stone Roses or Joy Division. And uh, whenever I go, I try to get an extra day and I go to Macclesfield. And that is uh, the birthplace of uh, Ian Curtis, where Ian Curtis lived for, unfortunately, short life. And uh, so I spent an extra day there. And uh, that is great, you know, just visited the, the, the cemetery and, you know, the, the apartment where he used to live and, uh, uh, and an amazing a pub called Proper Sound I'm going to do some extra marketing here uh, because it was great. And I, did, I just spent uh, probably four hours talking about music and uh, the Manchester, the Manchester scene. So yeah, it was great. Always great. Amazing. It's lovely to see how travel and music can really collide in such a beautiful way. Now, you are, you know, a big fan of technology for the hospitality industry, a proper futurist looking at ways in which technology can be deployed in the future and, and, and even in the here and now. Talking about the here and now, uh, you've just launched this new startup called Rebu. Is that right? Can you tell us about it? Yeah, that is correct. Um, it is uh, basically it is a, a, a model, an AI model that uh, replies to hotel reviews, keeping the style and the brand uh, tone of voice of the properties. And uh, it was uh, a very interesting ride uh, because I started uh, thinking about this last year 
and it was uh, a full year of uh, uh, prompt engineering uh, to make sure that we got the right tone every single time. And uh, on top of that, we worked with uh, you know academics, specialists in linguistics, to make sure that uh, it's very even uh, inclusive when it replies, especially to languages where you have different levels of courtesy, for example, when compared to European languages, thinking about, I don't know, Korean or Japanese, for example. Uh, so it was uh, it was great and I'm very happy about that. And the funny thing, I need to tell you, this is a little spoiler, but it all started with a conversation I had with a friend of mine, a uh, tech engineer. So like, uh, imagine, imagine the stereotype of an engineer, right? And that's, that's my friend. <laughs> and uh, so he came to dinner one night and uh, after a couple of bottles, he told me, and I'm, and I'm quoting literally here, he said, uh, look, I do have a very low conversion on Tinder that translated to English means, look, I, I cannot get, with, get out with girls because I don't know how to talk to girls, basically. So we started writing a, a, a model uh, just helping out with conversation with girls uh, on on Tinder, and uh, and we started you know training the model on, on love letters, uh, love books, uh, interviews from uh, Latin lovers from the sixties, and wow. uh, but I was not very ethically open to to make it public, so I said, yeah, but we can probably still use that. And what is something that people are not very always very good at? but that can make a huge difference. And that is where I started thinking about, you know, a lot of hotels, they just copy paste uh, replies to reviews and it's very frustrating. And uh, on top of that, you know, replying to reviews, it does have an effect even on, in terms of search engine optimization. So I said, probably we can use it for that. And it started like that. And now we're uh, we're working on B2 and basically it's uh, the system will be able to write uh, uh, advertisement campaign, uh, blog post, social media post. I just want to make, my idea is that in a few months, this will be like an AI marketing manager, basically, for hospitality. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, good luck with that, Simone. Uh, you're actually you. here, though, um, to, as part of our technology episode um, and to share your insights. And I'm really keen uh, to, 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 for you to share with us what you feel are the top three technologies that are on the horizon for the hospitality sector. Well, the first one is, of course, what I called... Um, post search okay what we are seeing and you know this this trend already started a few years ago but now it's getting bigger and bigger is that uh, we're not searching for anything anymore right and it, it's what i call the netflix effect uh if you go on netflix for example or if you go on spotify it's very unlikely that you go and you check every single show or every single movie right it's more the algorithm that will show you uh suggestion and Netflix is great in doing this, uh, for example, even changing the, the artwork of the show uh, based on your preference. So let's say you, you like Yuma Thurman, for example, you've got Pulp Fiction, but with a cover with Yuma Thurman on, on that, right? And um, there's a lot of literature about that and how this hugely increased the, the CTR. And um, this is something we're seeing with travel as well, you know? So we're moving from uh, 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 travel brands obsessed with search engine optimization to travel brands that now needs to understand how they can uh, make sure they fit with this new search or post search paradigm right and uh and of course everything started to speed up uh last year with introduction with commercial introduction of, of chat gpt uh but we're seeing this in google for example you know you probably you you, you heard about google testing out uh, travel assistant uh, journeys directly into the search engine result page, right? So it could be that in just a couple of years, uh, when you try to search for, uh, I don't know, um, uh, weekend in Paris, you have this beautiful journey created uh, by, by, in the case of Google, by Gemini, uh, by AI, right? And, uh, and this completely changes the way we do uh, market our properties and even the way we do market, you know, flights and everything that is uh, around travel, you know, even destinations to a certain extent. And so I think this is super interesting. And I think that a lot of, uh, a lot of the people working in the industry is, um, is not, probably they did not understand that this is coming and that this will completely change the way uh, 
uh, guests and travelers, book travel, and you know, he will have a huge impact. Uh, and of course, there's an opportunity there uh, because now you can you can squeeze into this, but we need to change the paradigm. So I would say that this post search uh, thing is, is is probably something that is very interesting, almost at a philosophical level. Okay, because of course, up, under that there are many technologies making this possible. You know, prediction, automation, AI, and so forth. Uh, the second one is probably generative advertisement. That's another thing that is super interesting and. Uh, uh, we're seeing this more on, on social media, uh, Meta or TikTok, but Google, for example, is uh, testing now in the US only for now, um, a conversational advertisement, meaning that today, if you're a small hotel, for example, and you want to launch a campaign, you need to go through a, a web agency, right? Or an advertisement agency. And you know, for a lot of these hotels, having this middleman is, is, is super expensive and it's not sustainable. Now, what you can do is basically you can talk directly with uh, an LLM model. So basically you talk to Gemini, like, like you talk to ChatGPT and say, look, I want to make sure that I do have this campaign because I'm launching, I don't know, a, a New Year's Eve special offer for my hotel. Uh, make sure that, uh, that you can do that. And the system will write the copy, will uh, start bidding, and it will basically uh, completely uh, empower even small properties or micro properties to have an amazing advertisement uh, uh, visibility that they cannot have now because of the costs involved. Uh, but if you think about it, that's super scary for a lot of people working in the industry because this will completely change. Uh, you know, advertisement companies as we know them now could basically disappear if that becomes the standard, right? Uh, but uh, all the tests we did, we're testing this for a couple of clients in the US, we get way better CTR, we got way better conversion. And on top of that, we the, 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 the time we spend on the campaign just doing, you know, boring repetitive tasks is, is, uh, is, is close to zero because mm. the system will do everything. Um, and the third one is more uh, hardware, if you will. And is for the first time, I think we're looking at a new era of devices you know if you think about it since the introduction of the iphone nothing really changed okay uh to a to a to a level that now there's no real innovation in phones anymore right and uh since 2018 we know that uh traffic on the web is mainly mobile first uh for some some uh industries mobile only uh, but it's been always a mobile centric world right now we're seeing a lot of new devices, and I think a lot of these devices will fade, but I think it's they're opening the, the street for a new era of devices. And uh, you may look at, uh, I will tell you three names that I think it's worth taking a look at. And one of course is uh, Vision Pro by, by Apple. Uh, they're clunky, they're big, they're heavy, but they are something new uh, in terms of devices. The second one are smart glasses, Meta, for example, mm -hmm. I was reading Meta now is is implementing even AI into into Meta glasses. The cool thing about it is that they're beautiful, you know, because, because they're Ray-Ban. They are not horrible Google glasses from 2014. And the third one is uh, Rabbit R1. Uh, so I don't know if you heard about this device. Uh, they're starting to ship them now. I saw an unboxing. Super interesting device. Totally AI based. No OS. No apps. And this is really changing the way we interact with the web because for the first time, the web is changing, but also the devices we're using are changing. So I would say that to cut it down uh, to a short answer is post search, generative advertisement, and transitional devices. Really interesting there, particularly as you point out this whole idea of hardware and how that's going to innovate. And uh, when you when you when you also look at how you know emotionally led booking and, and buying now um, is so much driven, as you say, by guest preferences or consumer preferences. And it was a conversation I was having at the IHTF as well about that influence that, you know, that that's actually, a, you know, being more sentimental, being more emotionally charged in your marketing is going to drive much more return than generic standard imagery um, and, and, and descriptions. And um, certainly can see that around the corner. But as you say, hoteliers for so little time we need the platforms we need the technology for them to be able to do it now i mean the hospitality technology um has been sort of moving at leaps and bounds over the last 15 years um but 
there is still a little bit of holdback from particularly maybe the larger hotelier brands, but also difficulty for the independent brands to find that investment to really um, employ some of these new technologies that have come out. What do you feel, though, are the frustrations that you have with the hospitality technology market? Well, it's always the same. It's uh, it's the fact that I think a lot of these properties, they would love to innovate. They cannot do it because in order to do that, they need to get to their data, to the root of their data. The problem with the root of their data is that usually they are in a billion different software that act as uh, data silos. So that's the problem, you know? And I think we will have this conversation more and more now that uh, pretty much every single industry is trying to integrate some level of AI, you know, uh, generative AI mainly. Um, think about, you know, Booking.com or TripAdvisor or, uh, uh, um, open table integrating um, open AI into uh, their, their booking journeys, right? Now, if you want to do it with hospitality, you need to integrate your PMS first thing. And this is where the problems start <laughs> because a lot <laughs> of these PMSs, you know, they've, they've been built in a pre-cloud era, pre-API era. So it's very, it's very difficult to, to a point where if you really want to innovate, you don't even have to look at future technologies. The first thing you need to look at is I need to change my uh, basic tech stack because otherwise I will not be able to do anything. And on top of that, I always say, look, you don't know where the market is going. Now it's, it's getting always harder to predict where the market is going and at what speed the market is changing, right? So you don't know what you will need in five years. You could predict this uh in in maybe in the 90s you cannot do it now so just make sure that uh if you want to innovate and if you want to be perceived as an innovation an inno innovative industry that we are not um we need to make sure that the basic technology and the technology where the data are is as open as possible this is really the main problem so i think it's not only a question of we don't want to innovate we're slow with dinosaurs to a certain extent it's true but i think it's more technology that we do have in our hotels now, it kind of sucks. Well, thank you. Nothing like the truth there, Simone. So where do you feel hotels need to double down their efforts, especially over the next year or two? They need to make sure that, uh, first of all, um, they need to make sure that infrastructure-wise they're ready for the change. And the second thing is that they need to understand that this is Kurzweil used to, to say that uh, in a beautiful way, way better than I can. Um, we tend to look at the future from a linear perspective. So we, we think, okay, we got VHS now, that we got LaserDisc, and then we got DVD. You know, it's always linear. But technology is not like that. Like, technology is always exponential. And we, we, we reached a point where uh, we're getting like in this curve that is growing like 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 a bomb right uh curse we talk about an explosion of technology so it's always hard for us to understand and it will be always harder to understand and probably to a certain we will get to a moment where it will be impossible for us to predict what is going to happen and so just make sure that if like just a few years ago you could make marketing plans for the next five years probably you now need to make marketing plans for the next six months that's it be ready to change your mind. Don't fall in love with ideas. Just be as fluid as possible. So keep your technology lean, open as much as possible and be ready to change your mind as soon as you can. It's some uh, great advice there, Simone. And certainly the conversations I've been having with hoteliers of all shapes and sizes, they've really been spending the last couple of years looking at their infrastructure. And it's really refreshing to hear that and, and to hear the maturity of those conversations now because they're not actually so scared because they can see the benefits. It's just obviously there's such a plethora of choice of vendors that that's a difficulty, isn't it, for, for the industry overall? Um, now, some exciting news. Um, you have just published a book. Yeah, uh, it just came out last week. Uh, it's uh, I've been working on this. This is my second book. Um, and I've been working on, on the book for probably three years. It's been three years of research, uh, three years of interviews and a conversation I had with amazing people like yourself. And uh, uh, I think it's probably the best thing I wrote. Uh, it's not just because of what I did right, 
uh, but because of all the amazing contribution that I do have, uh, I do really have some amazing people on this book. Uh, you know, probably a lot of people in the hospitality world will be familiar with Terry Jones, you know, founder of Travelocity and Kayak. Um, and then I have uh, Louis Rosenberg, the first person to be able to work on a functioning AR augmented reality system. And uh, uh, and then I got uh, Zoltan Isvan. Uh, you know, it's uh, um, uh, it's running for president in the U.S. with the transhumanist party. It's an amazing mm -hmm. person, really. So it's uh, I think there's like an amazing group of people that gave some kind of vision of what the future could be. It's a it's a it's a book about travel, hospitality, and the future. It's more like a, really it's a vision uh and uh um so i don't think it's a manual you will not learn too much <laughs> <laughs> but but i try to understand where all of this is going and that's basically what we did now in this in this 15 minutes basically it's just okay we know how to do stuff now we we all know how to do like a facebook campaign or an instagram campaign or google campaign but what what will be the the, the landscape in five years and that is the question that i'm trying to uh to 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 answer and i i hope i did wonderful well i look forward to seeing it and that's going to be available on amazon isn't it it's on amazon uh yeah and basically wherever you can buy your books uh italian version first uh we're working i'm working on reviewing the final edits on the english version uh so i hope this will be uh out uh in a couple of months to a maximum well, we'll have a couple of links on the description to the podcast. So those of you who are listening can check out Simone's book and hopefully get hold of the English version as soon as it comes out. Simone, what a pleasure it's been uh, to have you here back on the show on Travel Market Life and get all those contributions and insights. And it was I just want to say it was wonderful to see you at ITB in March as well, to see you in person. We don't get enough of that. Uh, yeah. But th thanks for your contributions and the hard work you do for the, for the hospitality industry because it's you really do feel that momentum coming and, and you can you can see that passion that you've got in, in every article and uh, panel discussion and presentation that you deliver. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you so much for, for this. Uh... For more, go to Travel Market Life. The music sensation by Zach Nelson is reproduced under license from Storyblocks. Travel Market Life is a Haynes Marcoms digital marketing agency production serving the travel and technology industries.